Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias, mi gente. Yo, yo, welcome to Daily Discipline 344. My name is Rob Hoback. Happy that you're here. Honored and humbled that you keep coming back by for real. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It is a hope day. That was a good one. That's for you, Ampar. Clearly, the kids aren't here. That's why I can be that loud. But it's also September 25th, which means it's Hobie's birthday. So happy 51st birthday, Hobie. Um, even though it is your birthday, it's still work day. So we got work to do. So let's go. First things first, still the realist. I am also G Money. Yeah, that's the nickname that Hobie gave me a long, long time ago because I have always had a knack for making money. Um, put it on a pen. Just, I mean, so like when I call him, it's what's up, cat? Not much G Money. What's up? Just that that's what we recall each other, right? Love him. He is my my longest, very best friend, for sure. And it's his birthday today. So, all right. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Yeah, that was my nickname given by him. And I missed his birthday party last year. Yeah. Well, every time I think about it, it hurts my heart uh, because of, I, yeah, I got a, an invitation. I threw it in a pile over here on my desk that I just avoided for a while because I was just in a dark place. And, uh, yeah, by the time I opened that invitation, the party had already gone and, just I, I I felt bad about that for a long time. So again, my apologies, Hobie. Uh, we'll try to make it up this year. So the thought of the day is "Who's Got My Back Now," which also happens to be a great song by the group Creed. Which brings me to my I I, I want to talk about the influences Hobie's had on my life. Right. So the first one uh, would be music. So we got to go way way back in the way back machine. So. When I met Hobie, I don't remember the first time I met him, but I remember being a young kid and going over to his house. And, you know, I lived in Jesus boot camp, right? There was no sex, no drugs, no rock and roll, none of that stuff. And we didn't hang around people that did, right? We didn't go to the movies, avoid the appearance of evil at all costs, right? But, you know, there are families, so we go by there and we go up to Hobie's room and it was like awesome, right? There was pictures of rock and roll. Kiss, you got to listen to some rock and roll. He talked about sports. He had the study hard picture or, or uh, poster. If you don't know what the study hard poster is, like you got to check this out. I mean, it was this chick, like all, it was like from her, her neck to maybe her navel. Just sweaty, nice body and a little cut off. And it was, I mean, it was just right there. And you felt like if you looked underneath there, you might be able to get to see something. Trust me, I tried, right? But that was Hobie's, and then for my 30th birthday, Hobie gave me a, an updated uh, a picture of that that stayed on my a garage for years, back up in Woodstock. Yeah, for real. Anyway, um, but my influence is so music, right? Go over there, and I remember when 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 I was working at Steak and Shake, we talked about this yesterday on, on Hannah Street and doing food prep with Hobie. He introduced me to rap music. He introduced me to a bunch of rock and roll that I did. I just like it wasn't part of my life, right? And so. I remember one day waiting for him to pick me up and I was watching MTV and they used to have what was called the hip clip of the week. And they played this song by white snake. Uh, still the night. I was like, what is that? That's amazing. I want to listen to that song over and over and over. So I get out in the car with Hobie. We're going to work. And I was like, Hey, I just saw this hip clip of white snake. Oh yeah. And he like pops in the cassette tape and there we listen to it. And his old cut was Supreme. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all kinds of stuff like that, you know, and so just a major influence in how I consume music, the kind of music that I like. Um, uh, he introduced me to the band Creed. I'd heard of their music, but I didn't know exactly who they were. Uh, listened to them a lot. And when I heard that song, who's got my back now, we've talked about this too, the evolution of songwriting, like Creed, their first albums is him questioning the way that he grew up in a very religious household. And then it was love. And you could tell they was a good place. And then the third album was like, yeah, this ain't working. You know, I feel like everybody's betraying, especially that lady, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, so I heard that song. And I'm like, first time I heard it, I'm like, oh my God, that reminds me of Hobie, right? Because no matter what's going on in my life, I know I can always count on him, for real. Um, in concerts, I went to my first concert with Hobie. Um, we, we got into so much almost trouble when we were youngsters. It was crazy. It was always around, yeah, always. But 
he just always had my back, right? And so, and he involved me and kind of took me under his wing. He got in trouble for writing shitbird on my uh, time clock at Stakes Chat. It's just all kinds of good stuff. I, got, I can sit here all day long telling you stories about how good this guy was or is to me. So that was the first thing. Music, family. I saw how Hobie grew up in an environment where his real dad wasn't around. You know, he's got stepdad and everything, but his alliance, his bond with his mom, his sisters and stuff, just unbreakable. Like it was not negotiable. And he never had to say anything about it. It's just how he did it. And then, you know, you fast forward to 20 years ago, his daughter showed up uh, when, and when Ray Ray was born. And just directly speaking, I got bounced, right? Like I was like, and I get it, right? I was never mad. But I was upset and heartbroken. But I'm like, look, this is how this is this is a circle of life, right? This is how it's supposed to be. This is what you would expect. And so, therefore, what I've seen from Michael, how he's behaved himself, is how I try to behave myself as a as a as a parent and as a family member. Loyalty, right? Like, there's one thing being loyal to your family. There's another thing being loyal to to the people around you that that show you the same respect and love. And sometimes you do it even when they don't. That's Hobie, loyal to a fault. Right. Um, and I feel bad when there are times I feel like I've taken advantage of that. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't recognize how loyal he is. And then, man, let's talk about the important stuff. Hobie's also the one that, that introduced me and influenced me to become a Green Bay Packers fan. When I found that I spent more time paying attention to the Packers than I did to my old favorite team, the Bears, I was like, you know what? What's the point? Right. Like I didn't sign a lifelong contract. You know, the Bears stake. The Packers are good. It's a bonding experience I have with my cousin. I kind of like the fact that everybody hates the fact that I'm a Packers fan. Let's go. So thanks for that too, Hobie. I'm sure there are many other things that I could sit here and talk about, but just want everybody to know, like you know, this is a, th that guy has had a major influence on my life. Uh, he's one of my very best friends. You know, you don't get to choose your family. Thankfully, he is part of my family, and um, just love you, man. That's it. And it's my channel. I can talk about whatever the hell I want to. So that's it. We're not going to talk about Hobie anymore today. Hands up. Peace out. We're better together. I appreciate you stopping by and talking about Hobie. Feel free to reach out to him. Give him a little happy birthday. Tell him how much you appreciate it too, because you should. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll be back tomorrow on a Thursday, Thursday. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We'll figure out that. Deuces. See you, cat. You're the man.